everyone, I'm Joy Chu, a former scientist turned content creator. And the goal of my YouTube channel is to help people discover the joy of cooking with science. Today's video is all about brownies. For my recipe, I'll be making a hybrid of fudgy, chewy brownies with brown butter and lots of melted chunks of chocolate. I created this as a small batch recipe with a 9x5 loaf pan, which I know sadly means only getting to enjoy half the deliciousness. But on the plus side, that also means we'll only have to feel half as bad about eating them all. And believe me, when these bad boys are freshly baked, you'll definitely want to eat them all. I have to confess that I used to think they were boring desserts pretending to be chocolate cake, but after reading countless articles and making way more brownies than is humanly possible to eat by myself, I realized, one, there's a lot to learn about brownies, and two, maybe I should have gone to grad school to do brownie research. I mean, a PhD in brownies should be a thing, right? In all seriousness though, you can ask a lot of interesting questions about brownies. Like, why is there a difference between fudgy versus chewy versus cakey brownies? Or how do you even get that elusive, shiny, flaky crust? For today's video, I'm going to go through some of these questions and give you tons of science-based tidbits to help you make your brownies. Now let's get to baking. I'm adding 45 grams of all-purpose flour, 36 grams cacao powder, you can also use unsweetened cocoa powder, and a quarter teaspoon salt. Then I'll mix everything until thoroughly combined. The amount of flour and cocoa powder you add to your brownies will have a huge impact on taste and texture. If you're like me and like your brownies on the more chewy or fudgy side, you'll want to add a minimal amount of flour and supplement with cocoa powder for some structure. The cocoa powder also gives an intensely rich chocolatey flavor, so the more you add, the more chocolate forward your brownies will taste. The type of fat you use can also change the texture of your brownies. Think about it this way. Butter and coconut oil are solid at room temperature, so even though they're melted in the batter, they'll make your brownies firmer and more fudgy once they cool. On the other hand, something like vegetable oil is wet at room temperature, so it'll make your brownies more moist and soft. For today's recipe, I'm using 85 grams of unsalted butter that I'm going to brown on the stovetop. If you want a full tutorial for how to brown butter, you can check out the first part of my chocolate chip cookies video, which I've linked up top. I'm also going to add 17 grams of vegetable oil for that more moist, gooey texture. Now it's time to add 150 grams of granulated sugar and one egg, and then I'll whisk the two together until thick. The dissolved sugar not only adds sweetness to the brownies, but it helps keep them moist. According to Scientifically Sweet, the way you dissolve the sugar is key to creating a glossy, flaky crust. By whisking it with the eggs, you allow the sugar to dissolve thoroughly and strengthen the egg protein sugar bonds. So here's an interesting experiment as a sidebar. I decided to test this glossy crust theory by creating a set of identical batches, except I changed one thing how I incorporated the sugar. For the first batch, I heated the butter, oil, and sugar together, and then mixed in the eggs later. For the second batch, I melted the butter and oil, and then added that to the eggs and sugar that I whisked together separately. I expected the second batch to be more glossy and flaky, but it turns out that they're actually about the same, with maybe the first batch even slightly more. So it seems that as long as you mix the sugar vigorously, you can add it to either the butter or the eggs. Which then goes back to the million dollar question. How do you consistently get that glossy flaky crust? The current answer is it likely depends on a number of factors, like how well you dissolve the sugar or the amount of moisture in the batter or the ratio of ingredients. I'd like to explore this a bit more, so stay tuned for a follow-up video. I just preheated the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract and mix in the warm butter mixture by hand until thoroughly combined. Then I'm going to add the dry ingredients and 70 grams chopped dark chocolate. So why am I adding the chopped chocolate pieces here instead of melting them earlier? Again, this depends on your preference for taste and texture. I find that if you melt the chocolate with the butter, it leads to a more uniformly sweet, fudgy brownie. 
I prefer adding them later because you get those luscious warm pockets of melted chocolate that give textural variety. Now, here's another important point in the brownie making process. For gooey or fudgy brownies, you want to fold everything by hand until a few dry specks remain. I find the French macaron technique of going around the bowl, then cutting into the middle to be fairly effective here. I'm done folding here, so now I'm going to line this 9x5 aluminum pan with parchment paper. Aluminum baking pans are ideal because they conduct heat well, meaning that your brownies will cook faster and more evenly. Now I'll pour the batter into the pan, it's going to be pretty thick, and then smooth it out with my spatula. I'm going to pop this onto the middle rack of the oven and check between 15 and 20 minutes. For gooey or fudgy brownies, you want to ensure that they're not overbaked by using the toothpick test. Once my brownies finish baking, I'll show you what your toothpick should look like. The brownies have baked for about 17 or 18 minutes at this point. I like my brownies more gooey, so the toothpick has some wet residue with a couple of dry crumbs. Once you let the brownies rest and firm up a bit, you can cut into them and enjoy. I've tasted a lot of brownies over the last week, so I'm giving my taste buds a break today and letting you guys feast with your eyes. In the meantime, I promise they're really good, so go check out the recipe, bake them over the weekend, and let me know what you think. Also, don't forget, if you like this video and want to keep learning more about the science of everyday cooking, like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching, have a great Memorial Day weekend, and see you in a couple of weeks.